Masters of the Universe Revolution is the sequel to 2021's Masters of the Universe Revelation. I was a huge fan of He-Man growing up, watching the cartoons before school and collecting the action figures like most boys my age. Birthdays and Christmases required no asking for what presents I would like to receive. He-Mans! And any birthday card money went straight to Kmart to buy more He-Mans. I still have my original Castle Grayskull and Snake Mountain as well as all of my original figures. In the early 2000s I found eBay a great place to locate the commemorative editions. I even have a letter signed by Lou Scheimer. Rewatching He-Man cartoons as an adult, I soon realised that you can't go back to your childhood. The cartoons brought back many memories, but they were rose tinted. The cartoons were actually quite simplistic with simple morals designed to appeal to censorship boards more than viewers. I had hoped that these new series would take the characters that we know and love and place them in more realistic scenarios. Perhaps they would deal with more adult concepts like deception, honour and staying true to your beliefs. The first series, Revelations, looked like it was going down the right path. Once Skeletor and He-Man's battle energies revealed He-Man's true identity to King Randor, I thought we would be able to explore the new relationship that would have formed. The father, who was no longer ashamed of his son, but now incredibly proud. The son, who after years of wishing his father would respect him, now has this respect only through a magic gift, not through hard work. Instead, Revelations was an abomination, focusing heavily on Teela, and even lifting Evil Lynn to supporting character status, while relegating He-Man to the role of MacGuffin. Falling once again into the man-hating abyss of modern media and promoting female characters at the expense of story. Here I sit before you a broken man. I thought this series might have revolved around the recognition of the deception of Prince Adam and Man-at-Arms, keeping the secret of He-Man's true identity from King Randor. Unfortunately, this was not to be, as they are seen fighting alongside one another and acknowledging their father-son relationship openly. This season evens up the scales in the male-to-female heroics aspect, at least having the decency to maintain a 50-50 split between He-Man and Teela. However, He-Man seems to be more focused on the smaller personal battles, while Teela is charged with basically saving the entire universe. Teela's lesbian crush from the previous season is back. She's gone from dreadlocks to that horrible shaved side of the head haircut that shows love to give their women of action these days. And for the entire first and second episode, she is heaped with praise as both a technical wizard and a fearsome warrior. I caught myself wondering if they would ever say her name, as I couldn't remember it from season one. It's Andra or something. I just remember it because it provokes memories of the word androgynous. They kill off King Randor in the first episode. The one relationship I was actually wanting to explore and it's gone. He didn't even die a significant death, he just succumbed to a mystery illness in his bed. So now Teela wants to restore heaven, which Evelyn destroyed at the end of Revelations. With the king dead, Adam has to make a choice between ruling or continuing his role as He-Man. For all of its progressive veneer, the show never once suggests that Queen Marlena can rule. Instead, it's the return of the blue-skinned bastard brother of Randor, Kaldor, that provides Adam with a solution. It took me a while to work out where I knew this familiar voice from. William Shatner. How was this kept a secret? So now a remake of 80s mega-hit He-Man has the main characters of both Star Wars and Star Trek in prominent roles. It's an 80s kid's wet dream. One flaw in utilising such recognisable characters is that they still attempted to add a twist to the plot, even though we all know the relationships of all the characters already. As soon as I saw the blue-skinned kid, I knew it was Kaldor, and any attempts to surprise me was met with stony-faced boredom. They also attempt some sequel bait here, with a reference to the kidnapping of Adora mid-series, as well as the final scene which shows Hordak being tended to by Despara. Fans of the series will know that she was originally Adam's sister, Adora, who was kidnapped and brainwashed by Hordak with the help of Shadow Weaver to be the captain of the Horde army. Whether we get a Series 3 of Masters of the Universe, or if they spin it off into another rendition of she Princess of Power is anyone's guess. I feel like this season tried so hard to have something to do for nearly every single character from the toys, TV shows, comics, even the movie, that it became obvious that I did not care for anyone. We'd just been introduced to these characters, and then we have to care about them being in peril two minutes later. Allow us to build a rapport, please. One of the big reveals, and they dwelled on it a fair bit, 
was Will Dorr from the live action movie. I never would have thought they would bring him back. I wonder if this means that Detective Lubick is still on Eternia. The animation in this season is again top notch, probably helped by having such unique characters from which to draw inspiration. Although I did notice an overuse of the rainbow effect, which I assumed to be the latest Adobe After Effects plugin. The action was okay, it wasn't a flurry of limbs and weapons like some cartoons. You could follow who was fighting who. What did suck was the quipping. It was too often and too corny. Some of the worst lines I've ever heard. There's not much that's worse than bad comedy, and a lot of these lines didn't even make sense. Skeletor slash Keldor captures Adam and says to him, Well, I'll be a monkey's uncle. True, he is his uncle. But how does the monkey factor into it? The action was also in service of a pretty weak main plot. Fights would just happen because we need a fight this episode. The music was serviceable but somewhat lacking. There was no noticeable references to the classic He-Man theme, although there was one piece in Castle Grayskull which I feel may have been inspired by the 80s cartoon's atmospheric themes. The voice acting was pretty good in this season. Mark Hamill's Skeletor can come off at times a bit too close to his portrayal of the Joker. Chris Wood is acceptable as Prince Adam, but I feel his He-Man sounds like he's reaching a bit for a more booming voice. Lena Headley is great as Eva Lynn, as is fellow Game of Thrones star Liam Cunningham as a man-at-arms. Yes, he's man-at-arms. I don't care if they gave his name to someone else and lumped him with Man of War. Every time Andra did something, I rolled my eyes. I feel like Kevin Smith made her a Mary Sue on purpose to court controversy. Keith David stood out as Hordak, purely because he's Keith David. His voice is too recognisable for such a part, and he only snorted once. All up, I'll give Masters of the Universe Revolution a 5 out of 10. It was just serviceable. They really should have taken their time more. Explore the characters. Explore the world. Introducing Hordak midway through a 5 episode season meant that there was no time to discover his motive nor his abilities. If you hadn't watched any He-Man or She-Ra, he would have come across as just some generic warlord. But we need to explore why he has so much power. Why does he dominate Skeletor, whom even He-Man can't hold at bay? It wasn't helped by the fact that these episodes were all just 24 minutes long, excluding the intro and credits. Multiply that with the introduction of at least 40 characters from various iterations and you get a very surface level introduction to most of these characters. Assuming there is a next season, they need to expand it out to 8 episodes at the very least and extend the runtime to 45 minutes an episode. Reduce the cast down to 10 or so characters, 5 good, 5 evil, and surround them with generic grunts. And try to make the episodes that we all have in our head, a more complex, more mature version of the 1980s cartoon. And make He-Man kick ass. Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, please consider subscribing. I release reviews occasionally when time allows, and a thumbs up would be a big motivator for further reviews. If you didn't like it, feel free to leave a thumbs down and let me know how I can improve in the comments below. Anyway, I'm Mixie, thanks for your time, and have a good one.